due to the blue area of the moon, an area that for some reason you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. From New Jersey. I'm Eric. Oh, hey, are we? Oh, no, are you? We're not taping yet, are we? Yeah. Oh, I'm playing DS. <laughs> I'm Dan. How you guys doing? This is a Common Pal pull list. Um, I, I got the idea um, after last week. Um, Dan was um, mentioning the comics that he didn't pick. That's right. And I remember that uh, back before we were doing the videos, we used to usually do a post showing the comics that we didn't pick. I'm um, highlighting them, um, sometimes mentioning why we didn't pick them, but mostly just talking about the great selection out there and, and you know, just showing the competition. Yeah, what may have been good, what may not have been good, like other things that you should check out just because it's not the book that we picked for whatever reason that week. So, yep. So, um, <clears throat> um, this, uh, ever since uh, we last met, I've read a couple oldies and a couple, couple new books. Okay. Um, I read Fables number two. I've never read any of Fables. So, so I started I started reading Fables because everyone's always talking about Fables. Yeah, it's been going on for a long time, too. Yeah, yeah, they're at about about 110, 112 issues or so. That's a lot of issues. Uh, yeah, they're, they're one of the, I guess, one of the few um, long-running books on, on Image. Most yeah, of the... Yeah, and Walking Dead. Yeah, most of, the, most of the Image books tend to be maybe 60 issues and stop or so. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting um, as a comparison to Once Upon a Time. Oh, the um, TV show. The ABC yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. So on the ABC show, um, all these people have been banished to our world, and they don't know who they are. Um, there's there's one little kid who is basically like the kid in uh, The Sixth Sense, mm -hmm. and other than that, everybody else just believes they're regular people. He sees fairy tale people. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, now, um, in Fables, they know they're Fables. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to stay hidden in the real world. They've still been banished somehow to the real world, but but uh, so they're there. Um, <clears throat> the first issue um, introduces that uh, um, Rose Red has been murdered. Um, I didn't know who she was. That's one of the more it's Red Riding Hood. Is that? No, no, oh. no, no. Yeah, it's a different person. It's it's the the sister of um, <clears throat> shoot uh, of Snow White. I think yes, it's I think it's Snow White's sister. Um, but but I didn't know who that was. And then in issue two, they're kind of investigating the murder. Um, apparently, the the big bad wolf is a, is a PI in this world. Mm -hmm. And um, the interesting thing is um, they've kind of condensed and combined fairy tales. So there's a guy named Jack, and he's basically every Jack that there's ever been in a fairy tale or nursery rhyme. So he's Jack and the Beanstalk. He's Jack Be Quick. He's all these Jacks. Um, and uh, he was he was dating Rose Red. Um, so. That he's one of the prime suspects, and then another one was Bluebeard. Have you ever heard of the fable or the fable of Bluebeard? The pirate. I, yeah, yeah. Sometimes he's depicted as a pirate. Yeah. So I had never heard of it before. So so I didn't understand what they were insinuating. Um, but then, interestingly enough, this podcast that I was listening to, a science fiction podcast, did like Bluebeard in space or something like that. Okay. And then I was like, oh, so basically he kills all his wives, hmm. and and they and supposedly he's married Rose Red in secret. So. Um, Obviously, to anyone that actually follows Fables, this is about eight years in the past, so no spoilers there, but but pretty interesting. Um, so far, I'm still interested in the book. This looks like something I want to keep reading. You know, Telltale's got a uh, an adventure game with Fables coming out sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think they changed it, but the name's not going to be directly Fables, so I don't know if that means it's moving out of continuity in some way or not. Oh, well, not well they, they do. there is a spin-off series called Ferris. I don't know if it's going to be about Ferris, though. Oh, okay. Uh, why don't you talk about one of your books? Sure, sure, sure. I have like a big fat stack here. Uh, I guess we'll start with the top uh, of the comics, Spider-Man. Um, after a while, where I think it was Marquez who was drawing it, Pacelli's finally back, and uh, I think she drew the last one too. It's actually it's been enough time that I forgot what Pacelli's art looked like. I forgot what her Miles and Genki and all those guys looked like. But uh, the Venom arc started up again. This is like kind of a really beastie looking Venom. You can see it right there. He's kind of like big monster guy. Um, I think that, well, we, we saw in, uh, like, Solicits or whatever, they have a cover coming up, you know, Spider-Man No More, the the typical, um, you know, Spider-Man quits thing with a Spider-Man suit in the garbage can. And uh, 
I don't care, spoiler warning, uh, Miles' dad gets pretty critically wounded, and my theory is maybe they're trying to go for like a great responsibility thing, you know, great power, great responsibility, and that's why he quits, or maybe his dad just, maybe his dad pulls through because they're not going to be so derivative, and then he still wants to quit anyway. Um, but yeah, that's that book. It's okay. It's pretty good. Um, I'm glad that they're out of this whole divided we fall thing, you know, do we stand thing. There was a whole Ultimates wide thing where Hydra and all this secession from the United States and Captain America became president. It was just some dumb, dumb stuff. But um, but they're out of that, and so now it's back to Spider-Man focused stories. I think the next issue of the cover has Gwen Stacy on it, so that should be pretty cool too, because uh, Gwen in this world is pretty cool and all that. So that's that. Cool. Well, we'll be back in a minute. All right, so uh, continuing on the uh, really old um, books that I've been reading, Sandman number two. Yeah, that's old. Uh, really good book. Uh, almost picked it for this for this pal, um, despite its age, um, because it's a it's really fun. Ha have you ever read any of Sandman? I'm not. I'm not. Is that Morrison stuff? No, it's uh, Neil Gaiman. Gaiman. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. <clears throat> I I'd, I'd seen this at Borders like a million times. Yeah, we all have for like the since like 1990 whatever. Yeah, yeah, or but 80 whatever. But uh, I I just never picked it up. The 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 panels looked um, just a little ominous, and and whatever page I always turned to, just it, I just couldn't catch what was going on. But um, after seeing some of his work on Coraline, the movie, um, a, a team up that he did with uh, with Terry Pratchett and some other stuff, I said, all right, let me check this out. And, uh, and the number one issue was only 99 cents on Comixology. Um, so I got the second issue. And um, so interestingly enough, in the beginning, it, it posits... Um, so, so, you know, the main character is Morpheus, the King of Dreams. And uh, so it, it posits uh, Cain and Abel as being of his realm. And, and uh, there's a really fun scene where, where basically you learn that Cain is constantly killing Abel. Like, like at every turn, so to the point where Abel has basically become like this PTSD guy who is afraid to open anything that Cain gives him and all that stuff. And then um, after Morpheus has a scene with them, he goes and, and summons the muses and uh, he speaks with them and uh, they give him one question each. Mm -hmm. And so, because he's trying to find some artifacts that he's lost. And it, so it turns out based on that, that there's going to be a crossover with Constantine uh, there's going to be something with the Justice League and something else, which is interesting. I didn't know. I thought the Vertigo world was completely separate from from the other worlds. Um, the Justice League too, not just Constantine. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. Right? So, so it'll be pretty interesting to see how that goes along. But um, I'm still enjoying the way he's writing the characters, and and um, I'm very curious to see where he goes. I, I, it's, I'm still along for the ride. So, so with this one, I'm, I'm going one issue at a time and ready to quit at any time if I don't like it. Um, so what's another issue you picked? All right. Well, that I've read. Um, we got Hawkeye Seven, Hawk Guy. Uh, it's the Sandy issue, the one where all the uh, all the sort of profits that Fraction would have made went to um, Red Cross. I think is the uh, the charity that they that they went with. Uh, it's a two parter. It's got uh, part of it is in New Jersey with Kate Bishop, and the other part is in like I guess Rockaway Beach or Rockaway Point or a uh, Rockaway. It's with, two uh, two with two parts in one issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and two artists as well. You got the, the. I was gonna say good stuff in the first story, and the the less good stuff in the second story. I don't, I don't like. I, I forget what Lieber. No, not Lieber Ham. I don't like Ham's art as much. I don't think it's as good. Um, but that's a personal preference thing. You know, like everybody has their own sort of style that they like or don't like. And I guess I also didn't like the fact that Kate kind of gets uh, knocked around a little bit. Whereas I guess Clint, I don't know. He doesn't really get knocked around that much. Because uh, it's not that kind of story for him; it just is for her. Um, it's cool. Uh, I like that he's hanging out with Grills, who is the guy who calls him Hot Guy. He's like, "Yeah, like the guy from Mash, Hot Guy." You know, um, there's no pizza. Oh no, there's a little bit of pizza dog. I think uh, it's it's not overly triacly and, and sappy and and, and 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 sweet like you would expect from a disaster issue. But um, you know, it's it, it has a lot of affection for New Jersey and for Brooklyn and all that, and so. Not necessarily places that I have a, a huge fondness for, but I, I appreciated it and I liked it and I liked the books. They were fun. So was uh, was Fraction able to um, uh, find a way to fit it into the current story that he's been telling, or does it kind of pause and? Well, there isn't really no current story that he's telling in Hawkeye. You know, it's kind of just 
the continuing adventures of, of Clint when he's not doing anything. I mean, it, it is it was kind of you know maybe a momentum breaker in that I think you know if this issue weren't here, the romance issues that are coming next would have been the ones that would have hit, which would have made more sense really since you know we're around Valentine's Day and all that. But so um, so was there any tracksuit mafia? No tracksuit mafia. Uh, you know, it's not it's not one of those types of stories where right. like, everybody's rallying together and like the tracksuit mafia are like, you know, bro, let's help uh, lay sandbags, bro. <laughs> it's more like uh, it has to do with actually it has to do with daddy issues, which fraction may or may not have. And uh, and the Kate one is just you know about sort of the trying for the human spirit a little bit. Uh, oh, okay. You know, it's it, it's it's not it's not as bad as as most of these. You know, it's not an after school special. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. So the the next the next um, two books I'm gonna kind of combine into one. Do it. It was uh, multiple warheads number two and number three. Yeah, that's a good thing to combine into one. Have you have you heard anything about th- about those? It's a sex comedy, is all I know. Um, you know, I, I think that does a bit of a disservice to, to describe it that way. I just I, that's the genre that I've heard it described with. So so um, multiple warheads. Uh, so what this guy decided to do is <clears throat> he actually took the um, BPRD model. Okay. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, where they each story arc is essentially a comic, uh, you know, a volume. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it would never be numbered in the hundreds. There's only, it's four issues and then something else, four issues and something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this this one's called Alphabet to Infinity. Okay. And so each chapter is is actually titled with ABCD going through the alphabet. Um, Until you get to infinity. I, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know. I, ha- I have one more issue left to go, which actually came out this month. Mm. Um, but with with uh, all the image and DC books I'm buying a Comixology, I'm waiting for the second month because then they're a dollar off. Yeah. So I can I can actually afford more books that way. And um, so basically the the main characters, um, Nick and, and Sexica, um, <laughs> which is like a hilarious name. But like uh, later on, it takes place in like an alternate Russia. Okay. And uh, and one of the characters calls her Mix, Miss Sextov. Okay. So I don't know if her name's Sexica Sextov or if there's some weird thing going on. Um, and I, I kept thinking, like, as I was reading these two issues, I kept thinking about the way you like to experience media. And I was thinking, from one on the one hand, I think you'd really like it because it's one of those books where it seems, given I haven't got to the last issue yet, it seems like the whole point is the journey. Um, there doesn't seem to be any real purpose to why... Um, Nick and Sex are, are driving around. Um, they just it just seems to be an excuse for the um, the author to just have them drive around this really weird alien you know alternate dimension Russia. Um, on the other hand, um, there's some stuff that I think you might you might dislike, like the whole call a rabbit a smear you know phenomenon. Yeah. It's not it's not really really bad, but there is some of that. Yeah, you know. Um, and then finally. I'm not sure. What do you stand on puns? Because I love puns. Um, puns are awesome. Okay, I, I stand on the right place for puns. All right, then, uh, then, then I might, I might have to make sure you read this, read this, uh, this book because everything is a pun. Every, every single thing in this, in this issue, um, when, when um, the girl wakes up, um, she's kind of hanging over the bed with her head, you know, and and over over the bed, and she says. Upside down instead of upside down, because it's dawn. You know, it's the morning. She's oh, waking up, oh, stuff like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, they're they're on their, they're on a quest to get to the whaling wall, which uh-huh. in our world is some place where well, people go where cry. They catch whales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's flying whales. Okay, yeah. they're catching on the whaling wall. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, I think it's I think it, um, there there is some sex in it. It's definitely rated rated M. I wouldn't recommend it to people have um, young young kids read it. But for the most part, um, that doesn't really play much of a part in it. It's just it's just a, a guy and a girl who are traveling somewhere, and then there's a B story about a a um, um, this person who's a bounty hunter, mm-hmm. and apparently in this world there are some people who volunteer to have the organs of gods grown inside of them, yeah. and then they're later harvested. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of these people has decided they don't want the organs to be harvested. Uh, so this bounty hunter is on his way to to try and find this guy. So it's an interesting interesting um, set of books, and and the first one just got me hooked, and I just had to keep buying them. And there's only four, so I was like, all right, can't go wrong with that. Um, we're gonna take another quick break just to make sure that uh, the camera doesn't you know decide, hey, four gigs is all we can do. We'll be right back. All right, so what's another another book uh, you've got on your pull list there? All right, here we got uh, another one. I I, I mostly 
I read all the Ultimate books because I find the Ultimate Universe more interesting than the uh, 616, but, like, they're killing me with the Ultimates and with UXM. Like, I just don't... This is not that great, you know. Like, uh, and and that's a real shame because because you hate six one six X Men. Yeah. But at least you've really been enjoying Ultimate X Men. Yeah, and it's not that I that I hate it. It's just that you know it's it's I don't know they, it's so much I guess world building right now and and, you know they 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 founded Utopia, you know and they pretty much have somebody who's about to go form a Brotherhood of Mutants more or less, you know and it's just instead of. Because again, probably because they got caught up in this divided we fall thing. Like instead of being where they should be at this point in the story, they're still dealing with with stuff that, like by issue twenty two, you'd hope by now that it would have a little bit more direction, a little bit more focus. Like there's interesting things on the horizon, like the fact that you know that there's Tian, like the uh, you know there's in in sort of Southeast Asia, there's this other mutant community, and they are, are consider themselves the true home for mutants. And meanwhile, Kitty is getting on the TV and saying that Utopia is the true home for mutants and, like, the for all mutants in exile to come over to Utopia and, and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. And there's some comment on sort of the uh, injustices against the Native Americans in there because they got reservation land and blah, blah, blah. Um, and also, I I don't know that, you know, this is another book that keeps shifting artists. I don't know that I found the right one for it yet. I don't love, I don't love the art style. But, um... It, it has promise, and because they kind of killed all the top tier mutants in uh, Ultimatum a while ago, uh, it also doesn't have to deal with Magneto and nonsense like that. Like, so there's actually newish people, except that they're just like, oh, this person also has magnet powers. You know, this person is Wolverine's son. So I mean, you know, it's close, it's not quiet, but it's okay. Yeah, you know, I feel I feel like. Um a lot of the X-Men books um, this, in the 616 universe, the same thing happened to them last year with Avengers vs. X-Men. Yeah. Um, where, and I'm, a, I'm very afraid that that's, this is going to happen to all the 616 comics in uh, Age of Ultron this summer, is that you know, uh, Avengers vs. X-Men went on for so long that, that Wolverine vs. X-Men is like, also in issue 22, and I feel like they've barely done anything with that comic. And, I, and it's a shame because... Um, it's a really good comic. I like who they focus on. I really like the, the writer. Um, I'm pretty sure Jason Aaron is still on it. And um, they, I just they had to spend so many issues dealing with a crossover. And and I know um, Fantastic Four is going to have to do some stuff with the Age of Ultron. I don't know if they're going to spin it off into a side book or if they're going to. It doesn't make any sense to have it. Yeah, I guess it'd have to. It would have to. But maybe FF would, and that that could really put a real drag on the story. Yeah. So so I definitely sympathize with you there with what was going on in Ultimate Comics. Why don't you take another one there? Yeah, yeah, because I'm pulling ahead of you. I got a Rachel Rising 14. Rachel Rising is a book that is unburdened by a crossover because it's sort of, you know, this, this indie Terry Moore thing. Uh, it still has all the great Terry Moore landmarks that you love, like just a lot of variation in the way that the characters look and the way that they sort of are dressed, the way that they act. Uh, I didn't pick it, even though I really enjoyed it this week, because it's just so mired in, in continuity and all that, that none of it makes any sense. If you haven't been reading it, it barely makes sense to me, really. But um, Terry Moore has been telling a pretty cool story. It's about witches, and they're trying to take revenge on this town uh, that burned them all at the stake uh, many moons ago. Um, so that, that's a way... Way different than I thought he was going to go the last time you picked right. one for the POW, like right. around issue three or four. It's been a while since you read this, and apparently, yeah, witches. So um, there's there's interesting things going on, um, and it's good, and it's well-drawn. Like, Terry Moore, just, he's fantastic. And I recommend the book to anybody, but it's not really the kind of book that you can just jump on. Um, any, any... Uh have you so have you found out already why the girl was resurrected and all that stuff? And it's because she's a witch. Because she is a witch. She's okay, a witch, yeah. yeah. So, and they're apparently kind of immortal. I don't know. I, uh, who knows? Who knows how the continuity goes with those things, right? And then, yeah, and there's something with, like, a, a, a demon guy and, I don't know, Lilith. Like, right. You know, it's kind of intense. So, um, I well, guess you're still pulling up the list so you can remember. See. So, um, I, I really, really almost picked this one just to punish you. <laughs> Superior, Superior Spider-Man number two. Yeah. Um, I, and, 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 um, the only reason that I, that I, that I almost picked it was, was that, um, the issue mostly revolves around, around Dr. Octopus, um, in, you know, in Peter Parker's body. Is that the one where he goes on a date with Mary Jane? A series of dates. 
and it, it's just it's just really funny to see how he how he sees it. You know, he's he's like, all right, you know, date number three, attempt number two with that Watson woman, and he's he's basically trying to deal with with dating her as a scientific problem. You know, and it's just really really funny to see the way that his mind works and the way that he's he's approaching the problem, and um, and then of course the the the, the tragedy. The true Parker luck is, you know, Peter Parker is there in force in uh, in force ghost form. Yeah, yeah. And and he's watching, you know, Mary Jane fall for this and not quite understand that something's wrong with Peter and and uh, and he's seeing, you know, uh, because of some stuff that happened. I think it was in Superior Spider-Man number one or Amazing Spider-Man seven hundred. Uh, J- Mayor Jameson is having like this partnership with Spider-Man and just all these, you know, things are either going incredibly right or incredibly wrong and, and it's just, it just really sucks for Peter to actually be there seeing what's going on. You know, uh, these books are done far enough in advance that I don't even know if they were able to anticipate the kerfuffle or not, but I don't know if you've seen online at all, but there's, there's kind of a, uh, hey, this is really grimy thing going on because it's like... Doc Ock is misrepresenting himself and trying to sleep with Mary yeah. Jane, and it's like, oh, is that rape? Is that weird? Is yeah. that... And I don't know. I, my guess is that Marvel just kind of ignores the whole thing because yeah. I don't think that it has it. I, I don't. It just doesn't seem like the kind of yeah. thing that they would address. But yeah. it is kind of weird. Well, I did. I did hear an interview with Dan Slott where he he addressed the issue. Okay. And uh, he said he said first of all. Um, wait until something actually happens. Right. That that's really more what I think is going to yeah. happen. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, so so basically, when when they did the interview, um, we had seen solicits for number two, but number two hadn't been out yet. And then, um, as you know, you know he's when two's out, they're working on like four or five usually, yeah. unless a comic's really behind. Um, and so he he said, "Look, guys, um, just just wait until something happens. Don't you know? Don't it, it kind of angers him, and I can see why. And any creative, you know, like like he's like, don't." Don't judge me for stuff that hasn't happened yet. Don't judge me for stuff that people are making up on the internet, you know? Right. Judge me for what actually happens, you know? And um, it's kind of a consequence of the, of the medium, though, because they release these solicits, yeah. you know, so far ahead, but not far enough that you know necessarily what's going to happen. And it's yeah. a serialized media type of thing. But anyway, yeah. continue. Yeah. So, but yeah, so, so it, was a, it was a fun, a really, really fun issue. Um, I know number three is out, but I haven't grabbed it yet. I've thrown it to the end of my queue so I can kind of try and catch up yeah. uh, with other, some other comics that I'm a little behind on. But, uh, but that was a pretty good one. What else you got there? All right. Uh, this one, I think, is... I don't know if the series is supposed to be only six issues or not. If it is, they're taking their sweet time. But you got Mara uh, by Brian Wood and Ming Doyle. Um, it's kind of takes place in, like, some future where uh there are giant wars going on all the time but also apparently volleyball is like a the big fucking deal like volleyball is like ah we love volleyball and so there's this one uh athlete mara who is like the michael jordan of volleyball and you know she's super famous she has every endorsement possible except that at the end of last issue it she manifested she's starting to manifest superpowers and so she was had super speed, and now all of a sudden all these cameras caught it, and they're like, oh, she's been cheating this whole time. And so, you know, she's, like, hitting the ball too hard at this camp, and now she, you know, she flies at the end of the issue, and it's like, ah, what's going on? Ah! And I'm like, I don't, I don't know where it's going. Um, you picked it up because you like Brian Wood. I picked it up because I like Brian Wood, and I thought it sounded intriguing. Uh, it's not, it's not not intriguing yet, but um, I don't love it. Yeah. Yeah, they were they were talking about it on Comic Vine. Yeah, and I was and and they were trying to be super super vague about the reveal at the end of issue one. Yeah, so I was like, I don't understand. Okay, there's this comic where this girl's awesome at volleyball, and it's the future, and there's a scandal. I like, I was like, I know Daniel really likes Brian Wood, but I can't understand what's the point of this comic. I don't know either, and and I and my first when I what I first heard was that it was six issues. It might be ongoing, like. I'm sorry I didn't research this before. It could be that it's going to be ongoing. It's going to be on for a while. But if it's six issues, they're a third of the way through, and they're not making enough progress, I don't think. Yeah. I've definitely felt that on quite a few books recently, uh, especially on Image. Um, um, Harvest, I think, uh, was a five-issue miniseries where I, up to about issue four, I was like, I don't see how they're going to get there on time. And he actually did a good job, and, and issue five didn't seem too rushed. Yeah, but but that can definitely happen sometimes. Pacing is kind of is kind of weird sometimes. It's wonky. It's wonky. Um, 
the art's all right. Um, the the writing's all right. It's not it's not blowing me away though. Okay. All right, one more break here. Music copyrighted. I could use it as like our our music. <laughs> um, all right. So the next one is one that we both picked, um, or uh, read. Uh, Manhattan Project number nine. Yeah, Hickman Patara. Um. So so I thought this was a great revenge issue. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's just kind of like a. Um, <coughs> trying to think of like a movie like that it's like it's like an inglorious bastards type of uh type yeah of issue. yeah like i i uh i actually have a a, a review to write about it for for entertainment fuse and i'm kind of struggling with my review not being a paragraph long because when you have a revenge issue like there's not much to say unless you're going to reveal everything that happens you know yeah, it's the manhattan projects kills everybody yeah the the illuminati basically some i i think my favorite joke that shows like Hickman's really interesting sense of humor is the uh come on with like a uh well the the is that, that the one with the Egyptian guy? Yeah. Yeah I just love that the Egyptian guy just speaks in hieroglyphics. Oh yeah 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 <laughs> and Laika is, is the dog. Yeah, yeah yeah. But that was he was in that battle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that was hilarious. I just like every uh, the last two issues that I've shown him I just like that he just speaks in <laughs> you know and and the, but other people can understand him and all that stuff. Well the weird thing about it and and, and I know that you don't have to be the same thing all the time, you know. Uh, but Hickman, Hickman tends to to write books that are a little bit bigger than just sort of uh, a lot of actiony killing. You yeah. know, like yeah. I think you'll agree with me there. Like, like you know, even when there is a lot of action, like think of that Shield issue that we did, where that's kind of like a lot of action, but it was just sort of heady. Yeah. yeah. And this is not heady. This is not. This is not. I don't want to say it's not intelligent. I just want to say it's not, it's not, it doesn't make you think. It's just like, yeah, he kicked that guy into space and he blew up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think for me, the, the weird thing was, um, some, somewhere around issue three, I figured, oh, this is like some really weird alternate universe. The Japanese have the Tori and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden at the end of this issue, we've got, um, we've got JFK, the president, which, um. Was it Truman before? So I think they skipped one. They skipped Eisenhower, I think. Yeah. But but otherwise, it's right back into our real world, kind of. Like, JFK makes the same speech that he makes in our world about going to the moon and all that stuff. So I'm, I was kind of confused because that's what I originally thought this series was going to be. I thought it was like, like you know, you think what's you know what's going on, but here's what actually happened. But then I was like, all right, no, no, this is some other universe. But now it's kind of come back, so I'm kind of... A little left, a little unsure exactly what he's trying to do, but but, but then again, I mean, the whole point of that is just to pretty much say that we already did this, and so we don't have we can do whatever we want. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know if if that was Hickman saying like, hey, maybe this premise is a little too constricting or constraining, and and he or maybe you know just a way for him to just sort of now from here on we can just forget about the history thing. Like everything from here on out is just going to be like. Yeah, you know how it is or whatever, yeah. and, and what this is all going to be just what's going on behind the shadows. Yeah, yeah, it leaves, it leaves me wondering what's going on, but but not in a bad way. It's just very interesting. It's definitely a setup issue. Um, I only had one more uh, that 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 I had read um, before we got here, which was um, Love and Capes, uh, Volume One. Um, they they had a sale on Valentine's Day, and um, I had seen the the trades when when I went to Baltimore Comic Con. Okay, it looked interesting. So I decided, you know, whatever the the it's it's two ninety nine for basically like five issues of a comic. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, it describes itself on the outside as a superhero situation comedy. All right. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. So uh, I guess the only knock I would have against it, it kind of has the feel almost of a web comic. Is it a web comic? You know, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It could, it could be. It, it might be. Because basically each page um, has a has a uh, a joke at the end. It's or, set a punchline, set a punchline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that basically, so you read a page, and it, it, it well, I'll get to describe it in a minute. So you read a page, at the end there's a punchline, and then the next page will be, you know, it'll have one of those little yellow boxes that says later or next week or so. There's not even the continuity of you know turning pages and still. And that's what makes me think it could have been a webcomic because because that keeps you from like from week to week not understanding exactly what's going on. I've seen some webcomics like that and they're a little bit harder to follow. 
Um, but uh, I have to say that it has the right amount of, you know, humor. Um, it's basically this woman who's dating a, a Superman XP, mm-hmm. whose best friend is a um, is a Batman XP, and um, it, the jokes are corny. You know, she, for example, she's talking about her sister, like how he wears. She, he's an accountant at his secret identity. Mm-hmm. He's always wearing these dorky glasses, and she's like, "Man, I wonder what he'd look like in contacts." You know, kind of the whole. He's wearing glasses, and that's his secret identity type of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to go any further than, than this volume. Um, it's the fact that it's set up punchline, set up punchline kind of leaves me. Um, I guess each, each issue is complete. There's nothing that I want to see. There's nothing that keeps me hanging on. You know, uh, it's not like at the end of, you know, Manhattan projects where I was like, all right, cool. Now let's see what happens. Now that Kennedy's in charge or yeah, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So it's funny. It's interesting. Um, it could be for some people, um, a lot of a lot of jokes. If you know a lot of comics, superhero comics, there's a lot of jokes, Batman jokes and Superman jokes, but not for me. Yeah, I mean, you should maybe look it up. It could be just like a gag a day web comic, and and you just didn't realize it before, because then you can just read it all for free. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what do you got there? You got about four more books left. Yeah, let's let's try and burn through these real quick. It's kind of funny that you were just talking about how BPRD does these little mini arcs and then uh, and then calls them like you know four issues and then say like, oh number this that because at about issue a hundred they decided to just go like just full on yeah you know just number them consecutively and then it's the the arc name and part whatever of whatever well they they went the Marvel way they, they we've got a flagship issue issue one hundred everyone's gonna go buy it all right yeah. now we need to start counting and they might stop after a while or something. Yeah, because before then, it was just, like, when you open the cover, it would say, you know, X of Y. Like, you know, or this is, like, issue 98 of, of you know, of this series. And it would just, you know, let you pick from there. So this this is kind of, like, um, probably trying to explain uh, what's going on in the modern book. Because the a bunch of, a bunch of monsters or, or demons or whatever just came out. And it's like the apocalypse all over again. And uh, I think this is meant to sort of show the old god and stuff. And it's just kind of, it's a real action-heavy kind of old school. There's a guy with a sword, cavemen, you know, spells and stuff. It's kind of interesting, but um, I don't, I, th- I think it's it's meant to sort of set up for the rest of what's going on. It's not bad. It's uh, it's well-drawn. Uh, I've just threw it down. It's uh, Scott A-L-L-E, Owl. I don't know. It's probably French. All right. So let's keep moving on. We got Fantastic Four, Matt Fraction, and uh, Mark Bagley. I don't like Bagley's pencils. I really don't. He's got this one one woman body that he draws for every single woman in the in every book that he draws. It's always like real thin waist. Always has like a midriff bearing, you know, top and uh, and like capri pants or something. And it's like, <laughs> the, and the cover looks like they went to the world of Avatar. Yeah, yeah. So they're on Pandora. And it's kind of like uh, it's got kind of a neat sort of kick at the end with the the way that that Reed sort of does uh, does you know pays tribute to, to Sue and and Fraction was even saying like he takes a lot of liberties with the uh, the Sue Reed romance and how they met and everything and he kind of retcons a bunch of it but you know as we've discussed it's a different writer different book you know different writer you may as well just assume a different continuity he'll keep what he wants and he'll change what he doesn't want to want to keep and so. and that's it's interesting you say that because I heard an interview with Fraction recently. And um, and he was talking about one of the solicit. No, the first issue it shows um, the thing as a human. Yeah. And and so the person interviewing him said, "Oh yeah, you know uh, when Hickman was writing, he wrote this thing where he uh, once a week he becomes a human and and it's like once a year. Uh, well, yeah, once a year. Sorry, oh yeah, once a year. And that's why he lives forever. That that great issue. Uh, and so Matt Fraction said that's true. However, that would be punishing people who didn't read Hickman. So that's not that's not what's going on here. Um, so he's really taking this and making it his own. Yeah. Um, the other thing that he said he really wants to do is he said he wants to go back to the um, the um, Jack Kirby and um, and um, um, <clears throat> uh, the Jack Kirby area where they're they're just world building. He said he said that's that's the thing that he was envious of the first the first run on Fantastic Four, you get to build the entire Marvel universe. Yeah. And now no one gets to do that much anymore and that's the biggest reason why he took the the first family out into space and yeah, you, you can see that. You can see that. And, and it's a lot more of the fantastic 
Um, you know, a lot of the uh, of that kind of thing. Whereas before, it'd be more of a um, in six one six, really deep into what's going on there, and because that's what Hickman's good at. Hickman's good at mining uh, backstory and mining continuity and bringing it to the forefront in neat and interesting ways and all that. But Fraction is just doing his own thing. So, and it's all right. Um, it's a pretty good, you know, it's, it's well written. I just, I really dislike the Bagley stuff, but but I can get past it enough to, to, to enjoy it. Um, I think I'm liking FF a little bit more, though. Doesn't matter. All right. Keep going, keep going. Fatal, uh, this is another one of the uh, of the standalone ones. Brubaker and Phillips decided that they wanted to, instead of having this be like a short run thing, they decided to turn it into an ongoing. And uh, so last last uh, month was also a standalone title, but it was about Josephine, the, the main fatale. You've read issues of fatale before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this issue is about just some other some other femme fatale thing. You know, like she gets burned at the stake at the beginning and she doesn't die, kind of thing. And um, and it's got kind of that uh, that horror comic thing where at the end you realize, oh, ah, like. You know, you thought you thought it was one thing, but it wasn't. It was another, and it's kind of good. And next next month is supposed to be another sort of isolated fatale, not femme fatale, not um, not Josephine again. And uh, it's working for me actually. Like the first arc of fatale, I did not like. I did not like, and uh, I decided to keep going with it because I was pulling it, and I didn't feel like telling the guy to stop pulling it. But I, I really took to it in the second arc, which was like in the seventies with Coke and Hollywood and stuff like that. And uh, this now that he's just sort of just goofing off in this world instead of trying to, to meet this this furious pace that he wanted to. I think it's getting a lot more interesting, and I like that sort of uh, Cthulhu, like, ancient sort of evil thing that he's got going on, so that's cool. All right. And the last thing that I read that's not a POW one, Morning Glories 24. Um, you've never seen Lost. Hmm. You should watch Lost. Morning Glories, reading issues of Morning Glories, is the closest that you will come to watching Lost. Because it has the exact same structure. Uh, every episode of Lost, at least for the first three seasons, it would be like uh, this sort of flashback thing about each of the characters that, and and sort of what's going on, on the island. And they both had had sort of thematic ties to each other. You know, like oh, this is why uh, in this in this episode of Lost, like Jack doesn't want to back down from this issue because he backed down and his father ridiculed for him, ridiculed him for right. it, you know, it, it, and, and so it's a lot of that. And so like this issue specifically is about Ike and Abraham and Abraham is sort of this enigmatic figure in, uh, and actually Ike is short for Isaac. Abraham is this sort of enigmatic figure in, uh, in the books. He's like the, um, he's like the, the guy in, in Lost, you know, the, the guy who runs the island kind of thing. I forgot Jacob, I guess. Jacob is his name. And, um, so it's that kind of thing where, um, you're getting a lot of backstory and it's flashing back to Ike as a kid. Like, there's this, this funny scene where Abraham is telling him about the story of Isaac and and uh, and at the end, Ike goes, you know, that's stupid. Like, this story's really stupid, Dad. And he argues with him about sort of the, the vagaries, the finer points of, of the myth. It's like, you know, if God told, promised him that he would, he would that Isaac would be sort of the father of, of Israel, then it, when God was asking him to, uh, to sacrifice him, he couldn't have done it. You know, like he wouldn't have wanted him to do it because they would have, he would have been breaking his promise. So either you know, so he's like, so this story doesn't make any sense. And it's like, ah, I never thought of it that way. And also, like, what a little shit, you know. Um, but it's cool, and there's actually some really great, uh, really great art in there. Like, uh, what's it? Isma, I think it's Jason Isma, and uh, Nick Spencer is the writer. Uh, but Isma's art is pretty good, and uh, and I like the story. It's just you know, I, I can't shake this feeling that it's very lost esque. Which is fine for me because I love Lost, but I'm like, man, it's like really kind of cribbing off a of Lost a little closely, isn't it? But it's cool stuff, and I almost picked it for this week, but I think you would have read it, Millie. So, cool. Yep.